Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. I'm going to be comparing the A7R2 to the new A7R3 in terms of color. Not doing a full review, kind of late to the game on this one, but I was mostly interested in the question, did Sony change any colors? Because, you know, a lot of people give Sony a hard time about not having the best colors. So if I were a color scientist working at Sony, um, it'd be kind of a daunting task because on one hand, you want to be improving the colors, making them better. But on the other hand, if you bought like these two cameras, for instance, and you're shooting an interview, Sony wants them to match. Um, so if you're going to be making changes as a color scientist, you got to be doing very minor changes. What we're doing here is I'm going to be showing a lot of examples, not only in my office. Skin tone to me is probably the most important. But I'm going to be looking at the color of grass and the color of sky in, in different profiles. But I can't cover it all. There's just no way. I mean, you're looking at luminance, there's saturation, there's hue, there's the gamma curve, there's uh, how saturation deals with the, the brightness. Um, there's so many different things. So I'm just gonna concentrate mostly on skin, the blue sky, and the green grass. All right, first up, we got the A7R3 on the left, A7R2 on the right, and this is the S-Log2 with the still color mode profile not S gamut or anything else. Um, and as you can see, there's uh, a little bit of difference. The green grass, I would say, is very similar. The sky, which kind of has some blues and cyans in it, are similar. But the water, the water is definitely, if I were to say it, the water looks to be shifting towards purple. So here's the A7R3 on the left again. It'll always be on the left, A7R2. This is the vivid profile. Um, I would say these are pretty close. Again, the green grass is, um, I'd say, very close in saturation and U luminance. But the color of the water, it seems to be on this one that the vivid color style um, is a little bit, uh, on the A7R2, is a little bit more saturated, maybe. Um, on this one is landscape, and then it kind of flips the other way, where, again, maybe the water is going a little bit more purplish or more saturated on the a7r3 for the landscape profile next up we have standard um, this one was probably the closest out of all of them it's extremely close the grass the water the sky the rocks um, everything looks matches up really really close so if you're going to use these two cameras i would definitely use this profile over any of the others all right, moving on to Vivid, but this is a different lighting situation. Uh, the sun has come up uh, before. That was kind of just around pre-dawn. Um, and this is, uh, I don't know if it's noon. I can't remember exactly when I shot this if I was on vacation. But these match up really well, really, really close when you look at it in terms of that type of lighting. Now we're on Standard. Um, now Standard, I would say the, the blue water looks a little bit different and that might be more of a gamma curve thing rather than a hue or saturation because if you add contrast you might add some saturation and make the water a little bit different uh neutral uh these look pretty close next up is landscape uh landscape also looks um pretty close and you can see over there on the left hand side you can see a whale coming out of the water <laughs> and Back to S-Log2, and again, we're in this brighter situation. Um, and again, what you're going to notice is the color of the water is going kind of, I don't know, purple. It's not looking like water. So if I were to say they're actually not really making an improvement here, it's kind of going a little wonky with that particular color. Okay, this is Cine 1, and again, we're getting the same type of thing going on. Um, so the creative styles might be very similar but the picture profiles seem to be looking quite different um, in terms of the color and next up is a sunset situation um, the a7r3 has my 16 to 70 it's not the sharpest lens um, and i don't think i nailed the focus so disregard the focus but in terms of the colors they're warmer colors that you see here um, they look pretty close uh, a7r2 maybe is a little bit more orangey or yellow but they're very very close next up, i want to look at skin tones again this is shot in standard um, and this is under difficult lighting situation these cameras are totally matched everything from the dro to the contrast the sharpness uh, everything the white balance the calvin are 
shot exactly the same. In this case, it looks like the A7R3 looks uh, a lot better. Um, and the A7R2 kind of has that yellow cast. This could be a lot of different things going on here. I mean, the way the camera was calibrated in the factory in terms of how it interprets Calvin could be slightly different. The A7R2 maybe came out slightly warmer. Um, who knows? But one of the things I want to talk about in terms of lenses is these were shot with the exact same lens. This is the 70 to 200, um, and the lighting did not change at all. Those other tests I was doing where I have a 55 and the 16 to 70, um, I've tested those two lenses to see if there's any color differences, and Sony does a really good job making their lenses matched really well in terms of color. Um, not so much maybe contrast, but definitely color. I don't think we're seeing any color differences um, when we're looking at the lens. All right, now I've got the S-Log2 with the still movie color profile loaded on both of these cameras. Um, exact same settings. Again, we're using two different lenses, but I've tested both of them and they look almost identical. Uh, they're not introducing any sort of color shifts between these two Sony lenses. So as you can tell, the color of, if you've been watching my channel for a while, this, this is a very old sweatshirt. Uh, I know the exact color of it. I can tell you the A7R3 in the still color mode um, is not interpreting this color correctly. It's going more purple. Uh, whereas the A7R2, uh, the color does look correct. Now this, I haven't graded this. This is raw out of the camera. There's no grading with this S-Log2 footage. All right, I throw, I throw another one in. This is S-Log2 with the color mode called Pro. Um, so you can see the differences between the two. Now, I would say in conclusion, if you're upgrading from the two to the three maybe, and you're wondering if there, there's much color differences, I would say, on the creative styles, there's not that much of a difference. Maybe a little bit of difference. The colors should match between the two cameras if you're like you're doing an interview, um, or let's say you're just wanting to know are the Sony colors getting better over time. And uh, now, if you're doing a picture profile, something like S-Log, then the blue colors seem to be going the wrong direction. To me, they seem to be going more purple rather than going to the correct blue. Now you might be wondering, why don't I shoot in S-Log S-Gamut, which is the standard like picture profile, like number seven, number eight, I can remember what it is. Um, I don't because I'd rather bring it in, have the option of not using a LUT, because when you use S-Gamut, you pretty much need to use a LUT because the, the colors get so whacked out and you have to get out like a, a LUT to put them back into the right position. Um, with shooting like still or movie, which are very linear, uh, on the camera in the picture profile settings. When I bring it in, I just add a contrast curve, maybe a little bit of saturation, and boom, the colors just snap into place. So that's pretty much why um, a lot of these tests that you saw, I was using like um, still or the movie mode. I don't use S gamut that often. So that's pretty much it. Um, all right, I'll talk to you guys later, bye.